Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. I want you to know that this the quality of Christians that men of God are marketing and advertising will not stand the test of time. They lack the impetus to endure. Hallelujah. And after that encounter, I began to pursue God. I, I had no business with ministry. In fact, let me tell you something, Pastor. The first crusade that we had, there was no name of ministry. We had to come together and a Jimmy told me what would be the name of this ministry now. I said, I don't know. God didn't give me any name. Let's find something. I can't even remember the name we used. Trinity something. One kind of name like that. Just to be able to explain to PFN we are coming for a crusade. And now I see a lot of people all around moving with bodyguards and moving with people claiming that they are doing ministry. And they mentored the life of very wrong men of God who are out of the program of God. Don't use cars and suits and English and crowd to gauge that a man is close to the presence of God. You will be greatly deceived. Motivational speakers park stadiums. Are they anointed? But they park stadiums with people paying thousands of dollars to hear them speak. It doesn't take too much to gather people. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me tonight? And I began this encounter. Let me tell you something. I would pray for days. I wasn't looking for ministry. Show me your face. Show me your glory, oh God. That's all I want. A time came, it was, it was a matter of life and death. I remember I would go to Lifeway, Lifeway, and then I had, I had, <sighs> do you know, I would be in the restaurant in community market, immediately I finish eating, there's one, anywhere I hear them playing a tape, there were Christian bookstores around, I would just go and sit down there, I knew almost all of them, I was hungry, I spent my money on books, books on purpose i will never forget writing an article about myself if i were dead that's what i wrote that was the article i wrote how people may come for my funeral come for this and that and that i did crazy things hallelujah at the back of Ramat, you know that bush there they started developing it now it was at the back of Ramat. that's where i would go and shout like a madman in the night saying lord will you reveal yourself or kill me don't criticize a man till you know the passion and the story behind the glory god never gave me any assurance that i'll be standing and listening to people but he gave me one assurance he said early will i seek you i will show you some scriptures tonight hallelujah i'll never forget dramatic encounters i was staying in Danfodio, and i remember what used to happen people will come to my room when they come to it was myself steve strings and andy ambassador who were roommates room 155 old block people used to come in the morning in the morning i was a strange person i could be lying down and the next thing the moment i see an angel steve strings or somebody the moment he may just be playing the guitar and something happens the power of god is breaking out people outside the room are falling under the anointing it was a strange life i would climb on top of vet medicine there was one empty place at the very top in the night when people are sleeping i would sit there i had a chair and i would sit there and cry in the night and say will you not reveal yourself to me oh god Holy Spirit, 
I wait on you Holy Spirit I wait on you Hallelujah When I was staying in area BZ I used to seek the Lord I was staying alone Well with a roommate but Mostly alone And this is where The encounters of my life Took another dimension I was broke Sometimes I would not have money But there was a guava tree in front of the house I would go and plug the guava there And eat it and take water And say Lord I give you praise And I would lock up myself Praying and then at a point Listen to me Certain things started happening in my life I would be praying I didn't even know it was called the cloud of his presence I stand before God and I tell you the truth I lie not a literal mist you know how vapor is that's how it will enter the room and I was being careful so that I wouldn't dapple into any demonic thing I had to search the scripture and I saw when the cloud of God's glory entered the temple and the priest could not even minister again it's in your Bible hallelujah I'll never forget praying for somebody who had chicken pox God is my witness it was in less than three hours or so the person came back and almost 90% of what he had had disappeared and there was nobody to clap for me I didn't even know it was a spectacular miracle you know the problem with a lot of people there are too many people to clap for you when you have not done anything so it makes us believe we gather around a lot of people who are not passionate about God I was seeking the face of God with all my heart then there used to be lots of fellowships on campus to do a lot of things I would just go behind Sunday school building and sit down there and I used the worship that was being played by several campus fellowships for my spiritual look let me tell you something this is the reason why you may talk about somebody and God will judge you at once because he has a track record of sacrifice there is there is is like blood on the altar that speaks hallelujah when Reinhard Bonke was coming for crusade I remember that time I went I've shared with you the story six hours I was standing no seat a pregnant woman was standing close to me small time the woman will lean on me I said madam I understand you are pregnant but this 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 whole thing I'm we're all tired here but I was determined my life is a testimony of dramatic encounters I started having all of these encounters and I'll never forget listen one night the longing of my soul was satisfied when Jesus Christ appeared to me I have seen him it's not because I read it in scripture this is why I can tell you with authority that many people who claim they have seen Jesus did not see Jesus there is nothing that left there was no deposit in their life if you see Jesus even if it's for one minute something will enter your life that you will run with for a lifetime this is the Jesus I saw when Saul on his way to Damascus met this Jesus what happened to him a hardened criminal at once he broke down he called him Lord Saul was fasting for three days and three nights he was blind the presence of God made a man blind physically and there are people who claim they see Jesus every day fornicating around seeing Jesus stealing around seeing Jesus doing all kinds of things they say they are seeing Jesus that's not the Jesus I saw that's not the Jesus I saw for when you see him when Zechariah saw just an angel an angel he made Zechariah dumb an angel hallelujah when I saw Jesus I was flat on the ground goodness 
I'm telling you, I looked like a speck of dust in this majestic. I could not believe that this was the man preachers were trying to represent. When you meet Jesus, it will change your life. It will overhaul your priority about ministry. It will no longer be an issue of denomination or an issue of sect, an issue of I was this, I was that. When you meet Jesus, it will rattle your, your whole theology to its foundation. I felt as if I was a dead man. I could not even see his face. Let me tell you the truth. It was the brightness. The, I, I, I don't know how to begin to explain it to you. And he stood there. His robe was white. It was not like physical clothes that you can see like this. It was like clothes, but it was like the clothes was attached to the person's body. So it's not like something you remove and put back. It's not our concept of clothes. No. Hallelujah. And light, brothers and sisters, light was emanating from him, the Christ. And all he did to me was to stretch his hands towards me. And he stretched that giant hand. Imagine like stretching an, an aircraft over a fly. That was how it was. And light, light that I cannot explain, that light came upon me. I don't know how God did it that he did not kill me. When I got up from that vision, there was a fire in my bones that I would live and die for. I've been captured by a love I can't explain. Now you have me and I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything I've ever known. And I surrender. This life is not my own. I belong to you. I belong to you. I belong to you. I belong to you. Nobody coerced me. I surrendered my heart. This one is different from coming to do this funny born again thing that people do in church. People just march and come out. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, and he's pinching his neighbor. I surrender all, I surrender all. Immediately he finishes the, the boyfriend or whoever is waiting for the person. And then they ask him, are you born again? And the brother or the sister, they mean to say, have you ever come out? They say, yes now. I've even been baptized. Come on now. Let me tell you, there are many people who think they are saved and God does not know them. I know some of you will be angry for this statement I'm making. Christianity with no transformation, impossible. Except it's not the, the Christ that died for our sins. Hallelujah. This was the vision that opened me up into ministry. I had been seeing a lot of encounters. Listen, somebody was pursuing me and I went and I stood somewhere in a room. All of a sudden, I was moved to look through the window. When I looked through that window, I saw an endless sea of people. It was, it was as far as my eyes could see. And they were talking, they were lamenting. It was a crowd of people. Hallelujah. After seasons of trainings and building, and their sound started zooming to my ears and then eventually it looked like they zoomed those who were in front and i had them it was a it was a sound of languishing and pain it was not a sound of celebration the people were crying and languishing in pain and this was what they said they looked at me and they said there's no food and no water all of a sudden in the vision 
it became like I had the keys to the storehouse of that entire crowd of people I was holding the keys and I told them I asked them I said who is the cause why you do not have food and water and they said you are the one and I said oh my god I was moved with compassion I started crying and I told them I'm coming right away to help you but there were people who had chased me and I was afraid of them but I took the step to open the door when I opened the door there was a gigantic man waiting for me and he was in the similitude of the Holy Spirit he now held my hands and he said let's walk together I will walk with you in this journey are you getting the point then he began to walk with me we were to jump from building to building just like structures like you have the students hostel at the top from one end to the other and he jumped to the other side and he sat down there was a small ladder that connected the buildings and i was trying to walk slowly and he was looking at me and laughing and that was how i woke up all of a sudden my life changed i would be in a meeting and would hold hands together just to share the grace quietly seated here and people in rows who fall under the anointing and i could not understand i would stay in the secret place praying and building people would come to look for me the way they will know i'm around is that a great distance before they arrive people will not be able to cross that circumference what is your experience like you who has already called yourself pastor what is your experience what message do you have to give your generation that's why we do a lot of copying and pasting a lot of copy and and all kinds of things we preach messages without power without transformation because they do not come from a depth of truth you're beautiful you're beautiful every time you see me worship him every time you see me do the things that i do let me tell you something whenever there is any seed of pride in me it doesn't take a long time for god to copy it there are too many encounters in my life all it takes is for god to refresh any of them any of them breaks me down many of you do not have encounters that's why a man of god will keep moving he's falling but he cannot see there's no encounter to remind him of where he was coming from and you can begin to sleep around with members of the church enjoy prosperity when jeeps start coming and cars start coming whether you pray or not you preach well let me tell you the truth the army that god is raising is an army that understand the one they are representing they know him they've had an encounter with him that's the only condition to be able to die for him it's impossible to die for a man you do not know it's impossible to die for a man you cannot you cannot relate with angels bow before you it's beautiful there have been so many encounters in my life one time i was in a vision and there was it was outside all the doors were closed all the shops were closed it was like a community and i saw people sitting down sick people all around and i was looking at them and i said where are the doctors where is the hospital these people are dying what is all this i was shouting speaking to the air the people were so weak and helpless they could not even talk to me and then i had a voice that spoke to me from heaven he said go and heal them go and deliver them hallelujah one time when i was praying i was worshiping for a season i began to sense an unusual activity of the presence of god in my life i would worship and pray and build myself listen i want to give you a very big key to my life and that night it was a very deep encounter with god hallelujah and while i was in that place of encounter listen the lord spoke to me and he said from today i give you my presence as a gift this is what god told me hallelujah from that day god opened my eyes and i saw a huge angel i had never seen him 
and I said Lord what is the name of this angel and the Lord told me his name is called the angel of the Lord's presence he said this is the angel that will walk with you the angel of the Lord's presence hallelujah this is the reason behind some of these mighty manifestations that you see that a lot of people do not understand I have suffered for this anointing I've been criticized for this anointing people have called me all kinds of names my mother is alive she came here you have seen her my father is alive I grew up in the midst of people I didn't come out from a wilderness my life has been an open book from birth to death the Bible says Oh Lord my God early will I seek you my soul thirsts for you it says to see your power and your glory this is the passion that is the missing ingredient every time I go for meetings after the meetings you see lots of people coming to kneel down oh man of God lay hands because we have emphasized impartations above encounters so people believe you can take a man's spiritual journey with one laying on of hands do you know that all the people that the apostles laid hands on and the patriarchs of old they had they they went through the wilderness together they saw certain things together the laying on of hands did not rob them of true spiritual experience hallelujah i remember my first encounter with a demon real physical demon listen let me share with you i'm sharing with you i'll put a few scriptures and we'll pray because tonight tonight god is going to give some people real encounters hallelujah it was in chapel one night i finished praying listen true story god is my witness none of these things i'm telling you are stage managed and the generator then they just made that generator there and i was just going to turn to the edge of it listen i saw a real physical demon i saw it with my eyes and he just shouted and told me get back that's what he told me before he finished saying get back i was already praying in tongues it was not premeditated and it just went vanished like that from that time authority came upon my life to cast out every kind of demon and devil anywhere brothers and sisters the ancient knew the value of encounters this is what we do not know especially preachers in our generation everybody just believes i have an occupation okay you studied mass communication or french and you don't know what else to do with your life you just say i sense the, the call of god upon my life now after nyse what will i do say, oh, yeah, try ministry now i say talk you were a very good bible study teacher you say truly i was they even gave me a price you just go and dapple into the vineyard believing that you are going to be effective you think so go and ask the devil how herbalists are trained go and ask the devil how false prophets are trained go and ask the devil how witches and wizards are trained you think it's an ambition it's a fraternity it's a sacrifice with their life they sell their soul to satan those ones have collected the mark of the beast already hallelujah that's why you can stand and tell the sick be healed and nothing happens there is no experience demons are not idiots they have followed the track record listen something happened there was somebody when we started koinonia he was coming he was in the occult i'm sure one i can't remember his name now one young guy he was in the occult they used to come and sit when people started sitting outside quietly they had seen me this gentleman was sent it's just that we don't we don't share one tenth of the testimonies that happened it will amaze you do you know what this guy told me i went on a retreat i remember one time i went on a retreat the lord asked me to go on a retreat 72 hours my eyes did not see light whether it was day or night 
I didn't even know what time it was at all. Whether it was 3 o'clock, I kept everything 72 hours. Dry! I'm not talking about this kind of fast that you take granite in the afternoon, later in the evening, you, are, you can't even wait. Quarter to six, you're already peeling the orange. The, the type, your heart, panting after God. Not looking for power. Hallelujah. Do you know after I prayed and I finished that experience, the day they brought the gentleman to me and I was about to pray, this is not an issue of being oppressed that you are casting out the devil. This is somebody that is in occult, aware, he knows. You know what he told me? He said, Sir, we have been watching you. And he said, while you were praying, he mentioned the place. He said, for 72 hours in the realm of the spirit, their eyes were open and they were watching. Hallelujah. And he was telling me how that they strike a lot of men of God. It's like a spiritual meter. That's why a man can be backsliding and nothing is happening. It's the deceit of the devil to make you feel things are moving all right. Your prayer life has died. Nothing wrong is happening. You are not even studying. Nothing else is. It's like a meter. It will keep going down. 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 You will not observe it. It will just keep going down. One day, the devil will hit you once. This is the reason why you will see a great man. People don't just fall like that, brothers and sisters. Are you getting what I'm saying? Samson slept with a harlot. True or false? Without prayer. He went and removed the gate of the city. That God is showing you mercy over your life does not mean he's endorsing your state. He's challenging you to rise higher. This is the message you will not find in church. Everybody tells people things are alright. Jesus has died. Wonderful. You are now born again. Do everything. Just book in the name of Jesus. Give him all the praise. Shout. Do everything you want to do. And there's all kinds of madness and hell is raging war believers are not sensitive hallelujah one of the greatest assets i have in my life is not revelation it's not understanding it's my love for god and it's like a cancer and i trust god to infect you with it tonight a love for god that nothing can take not power not anointing not influence people call me all kinds of name i don't care what you call me apostle daddy mommy uncle call whatever you want to call me that's that's your i thank god for the honor but there is something that i've seen that nothing in time can take it away hallelujah let me show you two scriptures I saw this scripture in 2005 and it changed my life forever. John 14, 21. Mighty God. John 14, 21. Let's read. One to read. Please, can we have it from Amplified? Do you have Amplified? Let's have it from Amplified. The person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And what's his reward for loving me? It says, and whoever really loves me will be loved by my father. Are you seeing it now? I want to show you the protocol of our encounter. And I too will love him and will show reveal manifest myself to him i will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him is that in your bible there is a protocol god does not just reveal himself to people because they are crying or because they are praying many people want to encounter god everybody cry even in churches we hold all kinds of three days one week revival you see the poster revival exclamation mark revival two exclamation mark and then another revival three exclamation mark revival 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 
and you see the people who are coming for the revival strolling around and coming to sit and the man of god who is now supposed to bring the revival who needs revival himself will now come with his his, his prepared manual and talk all kinds of stories and people just nod they say mm, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and they now say it's time to pray and everybody just finds a little corner and is just sleeping and snoring at the end of the program they say they've held this year's revival you know what a revival is a revival is an awakening that keeps a city and a community stand still we don't read a lot of history we don't read a lot of where we are coming from the world's revival was so powerful that men will carry the newspaper as soon as they start reading the newspaper revival will start in their house what is our concept of revival the average young person in this generation cannot define what a revival is we have not seen it what is our concept of christianity what do we really want to achieve ask the average believer why do you go to church it tells you to go and worship what is that it's just because we grew up knowing that you are a christian and it's good for you to go to church second corinthians or first corinthians Lord we bless you the Lord is redefining someone's Christianity tonight removing the things that are unnecessary verse 9 first Corinthians 2 verse 9 but as it is written I have not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for who them that love him not them that pray to him not them that want to serve him them that love God let me tell you this is the missing ingredient in the body of Christ it's not Rema we have enough revelation there are powerful men and women of God I attest to it in Nigeria in Africa in the world there are people who have explored the portals of revelation back to back what we lack is love and when I say love I don't just mean love by giving I mean passion and priority God has very little priority in our generation let me tell you the truth very little priority very little there are few parents the average parent in nigeria they believe in god but god is not a priority hallelujah ask the average young man what his pursuit is either to go to school or to go and serve or to get a wife or to get some kinds of things imagine imagine this is the whole circumference of our christian pursuit ask a man of god what are you seeking he tells you by the grace of god we should grow to ten thousand and fifteen thousand and then have our own auditorium have our own buses start making our own calendar then go on air is this our circumference of the pursuit of god i love him with my life he's my priority I'm obsessed about him and that has nothing to do with ministry it's my default state when I sing he knows I'm not pretending it I love him more than miracles let him take all the anointing from my life let him take the mean if God asks me pastor and tells me close koinonia close up here and I pack up everything I promise you to God who has created me this would be the last service that's the end of it everybody will feel bad everybody will complain and say why some serious people even say let's let's resurrect it you can go ahead and face god alone but i'll be so happy and i'll tell him lord what next if god tells me go and join a church or a ministry and be an usher i will do that gladly 
from the depths of my heart I, not minding anybody's recognition I don't want no recognition from anybody when you see God commit spiritual power to a man ask questions ask questions God is not stupid that's why a lot of people come oh God give me power I want to speak somebody sent me a text he said I cannot imagine how you speak and people fall I want it to I said go and ask God the guy felt disappointed go and ask God I'm not a herbalist I don't manufacture miracles in little dots of of, of oil and, and communion and all of that no we want to jump the process of genuine encounter and intimacy yet we want power that's why I question a lot of what we call power in the body of Christ a man who has so much power without encounter is questionable but right now everybody is chasing power power prophetic power apostolic power miraculous power people keep hopping around I've given warning nobody should come and stand in front of my house waiting for any impartation I'm not a herbalist you can come for counseling you can come for koinania god will bless you listen i believe in the laying on of hands we lay hands and we do impartation for all the people but we must lead you into a of desperation and encounter with the spirit say amen two more scriptures let me tell you how you know that god is not a priority if you attempt to live without him it's a sign that you do not need him in your life whatever you can live without is not a priority to you are you getting my point whatever you can live without is not a priority a is a priority you cannot live without it food is a priority you cannot live without it if you can live without god don't tell me he's a priority to you there are many of us outside inside you are looking at me right now you know between you and god that god is not a priority in your life you may even be in ministry you may be doing very well but is god a pri i'm not asking you whether you are born again or not i know you are born again I'm talking of a priority that if you are to delete many things in your life God will still remain hallelujah there is a law in the spirit Jeremiah 29 <sighs> thank you Holy Spirit 11 to 13 we'll read it quickly because I want us to pray the Lord wants to plant a fire in our hearts tonight and reorder our spiritual pursuit aright that beyond revelation we will love him for I know the thoughts that I think towards you we know this scripture so well thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end next verse then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you here's the condition verse 13 this is a law in the spirit never forget it for as long as you live read it everybody want to read and find me when ye search for me with all your heart this is the law for finding god in the spirit you will never never have an encounter with god until your all seeks him if you just seek him with part of you if you seek him with an ulterior motive you will, if you seek him because of business or marriage or money like many of us are seeking God God will give you the car God will give you the marriage God will give you all of these things we seek different things that God has we seek his hands we seek all kinds of things here is the law write it if anybody ever ask you what is the protocol for an encounter this is it you will seek me look at me let me tell you what it means to seek God to seek God is not to pray this is what a lot of people have been taught as seeking God prayer 
is not necessarily seeking God. To seek God is not even worship. Because that's what many of us still believe. To seek God is not to fast. To seek God is to cultivate a desire that seeks to make him the priority of your life at any cost. That has nothing to do with prayer. It is when that happens, prayer can be a machinery to help you get there. Fasting can be a machinery to help you get there. Worship can be a machinery to, get, to help you get there. But in themselves, they cannot give you. I know someone, and he's, I think he's one of the greatest person I've met in my life. People talk about kings of fasting and people who fast. I know somebody who fasted. He rounded up last year. 400 days. 400 days. Very quiet brother. Nobody even knows him around. 400 days. I had the privilege of rounding up his fast with him. And I prayed for him and laid my hands. When he finished the 400 days, 6 to 6, for 400 days in my life, even in history, I'm not saying you should do it. I'm just telling you that there are people like that. Yet you will still see that there are certain dimensions that he has not entered. So it's not just about fasting. People brag with fasting. They, they intimidate others with fasting. They make it look, how many days have you fasted? One will say three. Try your word. Say try. Another person said all kinds of things. If fasting alone brought people into the place of power, some people would have brought the throne of God to the earth and be sitting on it by now. Let me tell you, fasting will not in its own just make God reveal himself to you. The psalmist said, as the deer pants after the water pools. Bishop Oedeko said something. He said, if you want to know the secret of the hand of God in my life, you must know my heartbeat for God. I know a lot of preachers who do not have the heartbeat for God. I go for meetings and I talk with preachers. After a powerful service, they look at me. And they admire deeply the things that God has done in my life. And when they come and sit down, 90% of them don't ask questions. They are just looking for an envelope. And they put offering and sign checks. Where is my PA? Bring check. And you, you sign it. You, you really think it will give you an encounter? I believe in giving and all of that. We've taught this there. And they just drop it. And they say, pray for me. When you meet a man of the spirit, ask questions. Don't just kneel down and say, lay hands on me. What was the secret of this glory? I know lots of preachers that teach well. But three days after they are teaching, people have forgotten everything they have said. But I know certain people. Reinhard Bonke is one of them. You meet him once, your life will never be the same. I remember when he came for a crusade. I think in Makodi, Dr. Paul Enenche said something. He said after the crusade, they should book the room and leave it 24 hours. The room that Paul Enenche slept in. Hallelujah. And when Paul, uh, when, 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 um, uh, what's his name now? The evangelist, Reinhard Bonke. When he left, Enenche said they should, they shouldn't repair it. He said all the people. They should not come and make it. They should leave it as dirty as it is. And he came there and laid down on that exact spot. And said, Lord, just give me the hunger that you gave this man. I'm not asking for power. Just give me his hunger. That's how to pray. That's how to receive. That's how to encounter power. You are looking for the wrong things. The hand of a man. The wallet of a man. All kinds of things. Look for the heart for God that that man has and you've gotten the secret of his anointing this one you cannot receive it as an impartation you must desire and covet and pursue the bible says there are many things that god has in store hallelujah something happened i think 
a week or, or two or, i think a week ago i was sharing with the students school of ministry hallelujah i wanted to listen to a message and i searched for it search for it on on youtube i couldn't find it and i said lord would you help me and i slept it didn't take long when i slept i was in a dream and i went back to my laptop i listen to me true story and someone came and found the message for me and they played the message for me in the dream beginning to end so i woke up listening i had listened to the message and i remembered everything there are some things you see god do for a man and you'll be like god you are not fair god says it's not that i'm not fair this guy has attracted me with so much passion it's, it's a love affair that's why many people stop at the outer court they cannot eat the hallowed bread but there are some people what somebody is fasting for for 10 days god will carry it as a gift and give a man who truly loves him there are sisters cat walking all around hoping that one brother will get to see them whereas another gentle sister is just saying lord come let me use you lord i love you and i seek you with all my heart and in that seeking god will just wake a brother who is sleeping in the night and you just wake up shut up that god will say keep quiet this is not what we are talking about you see that lady she's your wife say lord please this is not the time god will say have you submitted to me or not it's a fire on. let me tell you the cheapest route to the hand of god is force his heart to come to your direction hallelujah that's the greatest church growth principle i know you can give people balloon and exercise book after service you can give them eclairs you can put all kinds of things put screens all around transport them to their houses if your heart does not pant after god let me tell you there are certain dimensions it's not demons god himself will stop you from entering hallelujah you will seek me and you will find me i listened to a very powerful um 26 minutes video about passion and hunger for god and one 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 asian was talking to the people it inspired me and blessed me so much and he gave an analogy he said if you if you lose a i think is it a 10 or 50 cents if it falls in the night a coin maybe 10 or 50 cents and it falls in the night will you look for it if you check it around and you don't find it a coin that is so cheap pastor will you spend all the night looking for it but if you have a check of hundred thousand dollars that they gave you not you and your friend and it disappears even if it's the realm of the spirit you will use light and bring it back into this realm so tell me is god a cheap coin for you that you search if you don't find him no problem any other thing man some of us can begin to seek god until a man comes into your life or until a woman comes or until you make five points or until you get that job you hear people say i'm busy i'm busy you are not busy when your leg breaks and they hang it for three months in shika no going anywhere you sit down there you are not too busy but the one who can protect and preserve you it's amazing how people claim they are too busy for god say i'm too busy i have an appointment go is it not when god takes you there safely i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting on you lord i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting this was the secret of david look at a man called david see all the bad bad things that david did and it was as if god didn't see it go and study the life of david and see how many criminal offenses david committed in his lifetime 
every bad thing you can imagine stealing somebody's wife kill the husband huh slept with bed and when the first child died he didn't repent he still had solomon with her again at the temple shoe bread did all kinds of things yet hear the testimony god said he is a man after my heart that's why the guy accessed some realms he saw things that were not given for his dispensation to see it was david who sat down and his love for god he said how can i be in a palace like this and there is no house for my god although you do not need tents to dwell in but i will build you a house god said no you you're already a criminal you won't build me a house he said no problem god i love you i'm not offended i will put the money for my son and god said what kind of man is this there is a way you love god that god you you try to force god to be guilty if he does not bless you just love him don't ask him anything it's in his word he says any man that cannot cater for his family you make yourself the child then you come and make yourself like the wife of this one come on now you have placed god in a tight position that he must respond he called the nation of israel the apple of his eyes try to touch the apple of a man's eyes and you will see how his hand will reach to you and slap you and the bible says the right hand of god is power that's where habal is got it that you you can go to a burial ground have you heard those kind of stories a hand will appear from nowhere and slap you and the guy will become deaf so what about the right hand of god that is power when god stretches that hand acts chapter 4 they said that you will stretch forth your hands when god stretches his hands it will clear the way the breath of his nostrils parted the red sea is it that god cannot save us listen i want to give us a food for thought and we will pray the way many of us treat god we are not sure whether god can come to our rescue or not what is a husband what is money what is a car brothers and sisters what is a house what is hiv that god cannot take it away what is ministry what is ministry that god cannot give you increase jesus entered a city and it was noised abroad what is a child that god cannot give you what are demons that god cannot keep them far from your life is the cause of on your life so great that god cannot help you are not the first to go through affliction ah i'm looking for money to marry it's just two months for my marriage keep quiet seven days god created the heavens and the earth how long does it take to give you money are you the first to get married or is your wife did she descend from heaven what is the special arrangement my child's school fees really you've not heard of people that god will stop from sleeping in the night to respond to those who truly love him i cannot tell you how many times people will send me texts in the middle of the night and say the lord woke me and said i must send you a seed i must send you recharge card and i said lord what are you doing to me i found a secret when you love him don't just seek to serve him yet emoji don't just seek to serve him yet seek to love him back up the name of your ministry whether it's, it's revival tower incorporated i'm not saying god didn't call you just keep it aside win the heart of god and you will ride on the wings of a dimension of his grace that you cannot experience or that you have never experienced before is someone getting blessed tonight this is a missing ingredient and so the apostle says it this way may the grace of our lord jesus christ we recite it after every meeting the love of god the koinonia the participation of the spirit let it remain with you i love god with my life this is the biggest secret i'm not the most gifted minister 
I'm not the most anointed minister. I'm not the most eloquent minister. I'm not the most intelligent minister. I'm not the most experienced minister. But one thing I can tell you, as God, I love him. Oh, I love him with my life and I love him with my heart. I love him more than power. I love him more than everything. I love him more than all of this, uh, this swan water and this bottle together with this Soviet inside. I love him more than this chair. I love him more than anything. Marriage, children, wife, husband, mother, father. If you stand my way with God, you already know you have lost. That's the end of it. Do you love God that much? God is asking you this question. For when you do, you will see power in your life. You don't need to talk too much. We just returned from University of Ibadan. And goodness, what the Lord did in that campus humbled me. I have seen the hand of God and I see the hand of God week in, week out. But to see the humbling thing that, 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 it was so humbling the wife of the commissioner of police of the state had to follow us to our hotel and stayed there and we were talking with this woman till about 12 in the night she wouldn't go i had to be prophesying and praying for her and she gave her ipad for someone to record it she said my husband needs to see this this is the favor somebody has been sweating about sitting from morning till night in an office i want to see the commissioner of police they say see god he said no 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 i i know how we will do this thing because you think god wants your money i surrender all to you everything i give to you withholding nothing this will be our song this night withholding nothing tonight you will release that isaac withholding nothing withholding nothing sing i surrender all i surrender all to you everything i give Holding nothing, but holding nothing. I was talking with one of my friends one time, and he said, He calls me Emoji. He said, Emoji, you are enjoying, you know. I'm seeing your picture on Facebook all the time. Ministry is sweet, oh, you are just changing clothes. And I was looking at the person. I said, look at somebody I've not seen after one year. Look at what is in his mind. You see that? That's what is in his mind. To him, he's enjoying crowds, money. He said, you are rich. Oh. You hear that boss is carrying people. And I, I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking, what is, what is wrong with this brother? Because to him, he now thinks one kind of magic happened. Do you know that you came into this ministry? because god brought you it was a law that compelled you to come there was no guarantee that you would come but there was a guarantee that if i seek him i will find him and when you find him you will find everything he has his power his wisdom his grace this is the secret rise up on your feet we are going to pray hallelujah david Dan, come you're going to sing that song again we are going to sing and we are going to pray listen for many of you two prayer points just two prayer points tonight the first is the prayer of release you're going to be crying and say lord i love you but truly you are not yet a priority there are i i don't know if i have that passion tonight forget about titles i don't want to know who you are in this place just cry to god and the second prayer is going to be a prayer for an encounter an encounter an encounter go ahead nothing sing from your heart lord i'm withholding nothing if you want the marriage take it 
If you want the relationship, take it. If you want my degree, take it. If you want my life, take it. If you want my ministry, my anointing, my money, I sacrifice it. My bank account, my anointing, take it over. I surrender Sing it from your heart Shake it, shake it Everything I give To you nothing Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Abraham, take thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest, and offer him upon a mount that I will show you. You are going to pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, where is that Isaac in my life? That thing I cannot release and let go. Who is that Isaac? Where is that Isaac? What is that thing I cannot give you? Lift your voice and pray. And say lord it belongs to you it belongs to you some of you may cry as you are laying it down but let it go tonight let the intellect go tonight surrender it to him I declare that you are above that job you are above that job you are above that challenge There is nothing my God cannot give you. Give him your heart tonight. Give him your heart tonight. Some of you need to rededicate your lives afresh. Outside. All the overflows. Some of us need to rededicate our lives. And say Lord I'm coming back home tonight. I've strayed from you. But I'm coming back home tonight. Holding nothing Hallelujah There are some of us It's business that took the place of God in our lives You want to make money Anyhow You must make money Others is ministry You are now too busy for God Too busy for the things of God He's no longer a priority Others academics others job before you got the job before you got the admission god was a priority right now we're so busy for him for others before you got married when you were praying and fasting and dropping offerings everywhere now the husband has come now the wife has come for many of us is your health when you were trusting god dying of HIV dying of cancer dying of a terminal disease you sought God but now that it has gone there's no time for him again we're holding nothing we're holding nothing hallelujah still praying number, uh, prayer point number one you're going to pray you're going to say Lord even if you never bless me again in this life you already have my heart the issue of backsliding or complaining will never occur in my life again even if the breakthrough does not come come on lift your voice that was the secret of shadrach meshach and abednego they said oh king we know 
that our God will deliver us. But even if He does not deliver us, we will not bow. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I know you will bless me, but I love you more than the blessing. I love you more than my bank account. I love you more than my desire to be famous. Pray. Everything I give to you with holy nothing, with holy nothing, with holy nothing. Hallelujah. Look at me. Job was at a point in his life where he was such a wealthy and a blessed man the bible says job testifying about himself he said in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord was upon my tabernacle he said i walked upon butter and i sought honey out of the rock he said the young men saw me and they bowed their faces the old men saw me and they stood up that was the position of job and one day the devil went to the lord and said is it for nothing that this man serves you in other words his heart is not with you and god said you can touch everything don't touch his life let me watch and in one day his children went his cattle went everything went and job sores came out of him dogs will come and lick his sores and his wife the first lady of the community became an object of embarrassment all the friends left him and the wife told Job, he said, do you still hold your integrity? Do you still hold your love? Do you love God that much to be a fool? You have become a talk of the town. People have mocked you. Job, you were a great man. Do you not remember when you dined with kings? And Job looked at her and said, why do you speak like one of these stupid women? he said though he slay me yet will i praise him the bible says in all of this job sin not it was not out of his mouth that he uttered anything bad he said i know my redeemer liveth and the bible says job was in a predicament but he stopped focusing on himself and he was praying for his friends when job prayed for his friends the only other person that did that was jesus and stephen on the cross he prayed for the people Stephen and the Bible says God turned the captivity of Job and he had double of everything children cattle what are you going through that is challenging your Christian integrity let me preach to somebody for two minutes what are you going through financial challenge your academics you may be on probation right now you may even be withdrawn let me tell you all hope is not lost the bible says though weeping endures for the night you wrote jam seven times and it looks like nothing is coming some of you are due for graduation but you've been kept again and again can i tell you something like job i want you to speak tonight that though he slay me yet will i praise him all your colleagues have gotten married and you are the only one who is not married all other people have gone ahead of you they are even laughing they said they sin and they are still blessed but you who has been righteous for years don't compromise your deliverer is coming i assure you god will ride upon the horse and come speedily to deliver you with holy nothing you may be married and it looks like your marriage is not working you're just smiling around but things are not working let me tell you your deliverer is coming some of you your homes are it's a place of living hell all kinds of war happened there father mother everybody some of you you are the only ones who are saved in your family and it's bringing a lot of challenge let me prophesy to you that if your heart is connected to god there is nothing my god will not give you the Lord told me something years ago. He said, son, if you will let men see me,
there is nothing I will not give you there is nothing I will not give you I have received things from God I cannot remember when I prayed for hallelujah the last prayer point and we'll round off tonight listen you're going to pray hallelujah and you're going to say Lord give me an encounter that is bigger than the challenge I'm going through right now give me an encounter that is bigger than the success I've experienced so that whether my challenges or my successes they will not stand your place lift your voice and pray give me an encounter give me an encounter oh God lift your voice and pray give me an encounter open my eyes to see Jesus open my eyes to see something bigger than my challenges open my eyes to see something bigger than ministry something bigger than titles give me an encounter that will create the impetus for my spiritual life no backsliding no going back pray I cry for an encounter open my eyes oh God give me the vision of the night let me see Jesus seated on the throne let me hear his voice let me feel his embrace yeah. you have my everything you have my everything you have my everything yeah, you have Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. When you seek me with all your heart listen hallelujah listen we are still in a prayer mode the altar call tonight is very special we are still going to pray don't stop praying if you've never given your heart to the lord listen or you know that you backslidden as we pray you to run from wherever you are inside or outside just come and be on your knees and be praying there are people god is calling back you know where you used to be don't be ashamed you've never given your heart to the lord inside or outside as we pray right now please leave your seat come out here quickly come out here quickly lift your voice and let's pray quickly quickly don't wait for anybody to call you come by yourself come and cry before your maker cry before your maker cry before your maker Say, Lord, I'm returning home tonight. Cry before your maker. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. You need Jesus tonight. Don't be ashamed. Come and cry before your maker. 
out here i want you to cry to the lord give your life to jesus by yourself don't pretend it you are not reciting any poem this night cry out to god from the depths of your heart and say lord i'm sorry i return home tonight let me tell you your friends can let you down your association can let you down why don't you give your heart to the one who will never let you down don't be ashamed of your tears don't be ashamed of your tears some of us did not even re realize when we left god you didn't even realize when you stopped pursuing him it's not like you were backsliding you didn't realize when success started taking god out of your life when failure started taking god out of your life those of you in front cry i know there are some of you inside and outside that should be here whether you are here or not cry to god where you are and say lord i mean business with you i mean business with you i mean business with you beyond ministry i mean business with you i mean business with you i mean business with you i mean business he is supposed to come out and he did not come out he is supposed to come out i mean business with you Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. From the depths of my heart, let everything else go. Let ev I don't care what it is. Let everything else go for the excellency of you. I won't trade you for silver or gold not for fame not for anything those of you in front keep talking to your maker he's listening to you your encounter tonight will be genuine you will know you found god you will never forget this day for the rest of your life hallelujah our time is fast spent but we're going to pray one prayer that the lord is putting in my heart listen listen the bible says love not the world nor the things that are in the world it said for he that loves let's let's look at that scripture can we look at it please we have to look at it first john 2 verse 14 to 17 first john 2 love not the world the word love there is the word eros lost a craving this is what god is going to cut out of some of us there are some of us that love god but we love money you can kill because of it there are some of us you love men ladies you love men more than your life you can go with any man you love god but let a man just come into your life there are some of us women you love women you you can you can do anything for women and a lot of pastors have said it doesn't matter let me tell you if you want the glory it matters i have written to you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning i have written to you young men because ye are strong and the word of god abided in you and ye have overcome the wicked one 15. whosoever shall confess that jesus is the son of god god dwelleth in him and he in god 16. john first john 2 not 4 2 sorry i was wondering first john 2 not first john 4. he said for all okay let's go back to verse 14. 
First John 2 verse 14. I have written to you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abided in you and you have overcome the wicked one fifteen. love not the world this is this is the John admonishing us love not the world it's not saying you should not be rich we just finished a series on financial dominion it's not saying you should not get married but don't be attached that eros that craving that attachment no love not the world neither the things that are in the world that means there are things that are in this world but he said neither the things that are in the world hear me he says if any man has this attachment and this craving for the world the love of the father is not in him as simple as that next verse for all that is in the world what are the things in the world it categorizes them into three number one is the loss of the flesh is this amplified please give me amplified same 16 amplified for all that is in the world listen the loss of the flesh craving for sensual gratification that is the isaac that some of us need to drop tonight the lust of the flesh number two the lust of the eyes greedy longings of the mind you want the best car in the world you want everything anything your eyes sees you want human or material you will never contact the power of God that way number three and the pride of life this is the realm that some of us are sitting in assurance in one's own resources or in the stability of earthly things degrees houses qualifications the Bible says these do not come from the father not the materials now but that desire does not proceed from the father but are from the world itself we are going to pray you know which of these three categories belongs to you every one of us in this place has a prayer point for at least one of them every one of us everyone and you are going to pray and say Lord tonight I'm not ashamed you know the encumbrances that stop the richness of your spiritual experience your area of vulnerability lift your voice right now and pray pray from the depths of your heart for some of you it's the loss of the eyes don't say it does not matter brother it's time for you to take the issue of holiness and purity serious you can't be sleeping around and say it does not matter don't tell me it does not matter who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord who shall stand in his holy place there are some of us who are hustlers you want to make it by all means you want to make ends meet it doesn't work like that pray from the depth of your heart is between you and your God tonight outside inside take it seriously say Lord I repent tonight take over this loss for money is killing me take over this loss for women is killing me take over this loss for wealth this loss for for popularity and recognition is killing me this love for ministry and title and accolades is killing me take it away let there be a circumcision a cutting away hallelujah early will I seek thee my soul longs for you 
to see your power and your glory listen listen to me we are rounding up let him that sins sin no more I'm, 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 I'm seriously God is speaking to people in this place those of you who drink an end has come I'm not just speaking there is power to break that chain it's time for you to take God seriously if any guy is coming to your house and doing every kind of nonsense after this meeting send him a text say my brother I love you but I'm ready to move forward I've had a message this night and I'm serious about my destiny some of you after this meeting some people need text messages from you are you hearing me after this message some people need your text message this night these are the destiny killers that are eating our life when you want to pursue God they just show up some of us you need to minimize movies the movie industry is that devil that is stopping you from stepping into the things of God the movie industry is not wrong except where it stands in the way of your intimacy with God you must minimize it for there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with civilian affairs there is a price in this journey but there is the beauty and excellency these are the things that when you do no demon manufactured in hell can stand near your life I cast out devils and I sleep like a baby I'm not just sleeping on my bed there is an atmosphere it takes a long protocol to reach me a long protocol in the spirit hallelujah those of you in front I'm going to lead you to pray don't be ashamed this is koinonia there are some of you who are really crying this is the presence of God don't be ashamed I'm going to lead you that you are not here does not mean you cannot join them if the prayer is necessary forget about who came with you no this is between you and God this is a destiny encounter those of you in front I, I see sincerity from your heart and I want to lead you please don't be emotional about this I want this to be a genuine encounter there is no habit in your life the power of God cannot break are you willing to cooperate with God there is nothing that cannot no amount of demon possession or manipulation or whatever it is that can stand your life when you sincerely are ready to move therefore pray after me and say it from the depths of your heart whisper it many of you as you pray you will be surprised what will happen to you thank you Jesus say after me Lord Jesus I surrender I truly surrender tonight I repent forgive me my sins I love you with all my heart take away all the things that have taken your place in my life this night I am willing to start with you afresh take me use me anoint me empower me and make me an ambassador in the name of Jesus Satan stay far from my life from today I receive grace to say no to every appearance of evil I am free I am delivered in the name of Jesus Christ now look at me you have made the greatest decision in your life and I want you tomorrow we are going to meet with you by five exactly at the chapel the chapel just by the Sunday school books and please endeavor to come we are going to meet with you and we'll talk with you by four sorry four on the dot for now I just want you to follow the ushers and they will have your details we are going to follow you up and I promise you we are going to pray for you if you are still under the anointing and you just want to lie there no problem but make sure eventually you meet with them please celebrate them
Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.